Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I will show you how to hand solder a USB micro type B receptacle. So I have a breakout PCB here, which I designed, and I will be soldering this USB socket onto this PCB. So if all you're after is a USB breakout board, uh, you're better off just buying one off the shelf, one of those cheaper ones from AliExpress or somewhere else. Uh, but if you're designing your own PCB with a USB connection, uh, this is the way. And it's quite easy. It looks a little bit um, scary at first, but um, it's really, really, very easy. So the first thing we want to do is to clean the PCB and our uh, USB socket. And I'm just going to use a cotton Q-tip. You can use a cotton swab, uh, no lint ones. You don't want to leave any cotton residue on that. And some isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is great for general purpose electronics cleaning stuff because uh, you can use it undiluted when it evaporates nothing is left behind and in its 100 percent concentration because of its larger molecules it stays on the surfaces long enough to get rid of the dirt and oils and uh, after we are done with the cleaning I'm just going to use uh, solder paste. So solder paste come in many different alloys. Unfortunately, the one I have is leaded. If you don't have one and planning to buy one, go for the unleaded ones. It's better for the environment, better for you. And they come in two packages commonly with like syringes like that. They're easier to use, but the tips dry out pretty quickly. I just put a bit of blue tack to make it airtight and prevent that from happening. Uh, but they also come in jars, uh, which you can use some tool to apply it. It's also very easy to use. I and mean, even if the tip is dried out, you can remove it and just use a tool uh, to apply the solder paste. And in fact, I'm just going to use a dentist's toothpick to apply it. All you need is a sharp pointy tool. Could be anything, could be a toothpick, could be a needle. Uh, this is something that I have, I've been using for a while. Yeah, I'm just going to um, apply a bit of solder paste to all of the pads here and then use the toothpick to uh, smear it and then clean between the pads. So now we have a good amount of solder paste on every pad and solder joint. And I'm just going to uh, distribute it evenly between the pads and get rid of the excess. Yeah, just make sure that there's a little bit of solder paste on every pad. And um, you might need to clean your tool in between that. Now, next, I want to clean between the pads. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get rid of the excess and then clean between the pads as good as I can. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect because the flux and the soldering iron and the gravity will do the rest of the job. All right, and at this stage, you just want to make sure that you don't overdo it. It's easier to fix if you don't have enough solder paste there. If you have too much of it, it's harder to fix the shorts. And now we are just going to uh, pop our USB socket onto the PCB and make sure the physical connection is proper. It should sit there tightly. And if you are designing your own PCB, uh, actually order the USB socket first because uh, they all come in very similar packages, but not quite the uh, same. If your socket isn't sitting on top of the PCB, isn't forming a proper physical connection, uh, it will result in breaking the solder joints later on as you keep plugging and unplugging USB cables to it. So it's important that your USB connector sits uh, quite well on top of your PCB to support the physical connections. So the, usually there is a bit of flux on the uh, solder paste, which will help, but I want to get there a little bit of extra, especially on the socket. And I'm using a no clean flux pen. There are much better options out there, uh, but it's good enough. Soldering iron I have here is a Hakko FX88D soldering iron with a 1.2 millimeter tip. And it's currently at 300 degrees. Celsius, it doesn't have to be that hot, but I like it hot a little bit, uh, especially when you are using uh, unleaded solder paste. It's important. This one is leaded solder paste. You can get away with a colder soldering iron, but it will uh, ease the job a little bit. Now I'm just going to hold the USB socket in place using my screwdriver. 
and get in there, keep the soldering iron there a little bit and then pull it out. First, we'll do the connections here and then I will do the other joints on the sides. Right. And on this side, we have another one. Now, the next thing I want to do is to flip it over and at the bottom of the uh, PCB, we have these uh, pins exposed. So I want to uh, apply a bit of solder there too. I will apply a bit of flux first. That's just to get physical stronger connections for the socket. So I'm just going to heat up the pad and apply a bit of solder and the gravity will do the rest of it. Heat up the pad. Yeah. And same with these ones too. You don't want to apply too much, but just enough. So some of it can flow to the other side on the socket. Just give it a visual inspection. Yeah, it's hard to see on the camera, but it looks pretty good. Now we have a bit of uh, uh, solder paste residue on there. Uh, again, this is easy to clean. I will do the same. Apply a bit of isopropyl alcohol and then clean it with a Q-tip or a cotton swab. Now with the solder paste, especially with the leaded one, it's quite sticky and it's full of lead dust. So you don't want to touch your face and eyes after you deal with this stuff. Um, just wash your hands properly once you're done with it. Okay, yeah, now uh, looks pretty good to me. Just give it a quick visual inspection. So if you don't like how something looks over here, you can apply a little bit of extra flux and then get in there with the soldering iron, apply a bit of solder to the tip of the soldering iron and try to pull out the pins and the excess solder. And uh, it should look pretty good. And uh, just make sure that the USB socket sits nicely on top of the PCB and there is no problems with the physical connection. Now we can test this connection. So I'm going to use a USB cable to test it. Obviously a USB micro cable. And uh, we will just plug it in there. And I have very nicely exposed uh, um, pads here because this is a breakout part but if you don't have it you can if you are designing your own PCB you can pop in your testing points and on the other end of the cable I will just use a female USB socket uh, if you don't have it you can just sacrifice the USB cable cut it uh, unsheet it and you will be exposed with the cables and you can do the contact testing through those cables um, so we have uh, five pins over here on the breakout board one of them is ID I'm not going to the details of what it is. If you want to test the ID connection, you need a cable with five leads in it. And then you can test that one too. The connector I have is only four pins. So we will be testing uh, the USB, ground, data plus and data minus. So to test the connections, I will use the continuity function of a multimeter. I will start with the ground pin and I will check all of these pins to make sure that only one of them is connected to the ground. That is to make sure that there aren't any shorts. So this first one is the ground pin and it's connected. And I will also test the other pins. So next I will test the data pins. I will skip the ID because I know that we don't have a pin for that. Yeah, it's connected and it's not connected to anything else. And now the next data pin. Yeah, and I will test the other pins as well to make sure that there aren't any shorts. And now Voltage USB has to be the last one. Yeah, so connected and there's nothing wrong with our soldering. So that's pretty much all to it. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, and uh, if you like my video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.